Okay, now we're going to be talking about um, more uh, in depth about function notation. We've already introduced the, no the, the topic there, the function notation. We've already talked about how um, the terminology or the, the writing there of f of x is just a big old fancy way of writing y. So technically that is a y. Now, you have graphed things before that looked like y equals 2x plus 3. So, I want us to see how with this new notation, nothing is really changing. So, we're going to kind of explore this for a minute. When we first started graphing, uh, the very first thing that we ever did was we created these x and these y charts. And we would choose a value for x, like say, negative 1, 0, and 1. And then we would find the y that went with that. And we did that by plugging in that x value and finding the y. So here I would say, well, y would be 2 times negative 1 plus 3. So 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2 plus 3 would be 1. And then, you know, we could go through and we could plot that point. So let's see, negative 1, 1 would be right there. And then we move on to our next point. So our next point is an x value of 0, and to find the y, we would plug that in to say 2 times 0 plus 3. So 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3, and then we could plot that point. So 0, 3, we could say is right about there. Now for the last point here, if x is 1, we would plug that in and find the, the y that went with it. So 2 times 1 would be 2, plus 3 would be 5. I should do that in blue, keep those consistent. So this would be the point 1 comma 5 right here. And then we would draw our line through the points and say, well, that's what that looks like. Okay, when we used this type of notation, we said that x is the independent variable because we chose those and y is the dependent variable because our y values depended on what we chose for x. Well now, when our new notation, this function notation, f of x, I want us to see that this is the exact same thing. We're just going to have um, it written slightly different. But in in a previous um, section, we've talked about how to evaluate functions. So what if I saw something like f of negative 1? Well, that would mean I would take my f function, and instead of x's, we're going to be using negative 1's. So if I were to plug a negative 1 in in place of x, then we would get 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1. So the f of negative 1 is 1. Doesn't that look very, very similar to this? Absolutely, because they are the exact same thing. This is telling us what our x value is. This is telling us what our y value is. And if we were to write that as a point, that would be negative 1, 1, just like it was over here. Nothing is changing except for the notation, but the meaning of the x's and the y's are still going to be the exact same as they always were. Now, so if I'm, if I'm asking, or if I'm asked, rather, to find the f of 0, what are we being asked to find? Well, they are giving us an x value, and we're supposed to find what that is. So we're supposed to find a y value. Uh, value. Now the opposite of that would be if they were to give you something like this and say f of x equals 5. Well in this case, we're given a y value, because remember, f of x is just a fancy way of saying y and we're supposed to find an x value that goes with that. But we can do that either way, as long as we understand what the notation means.